age than funny. So we're getting real close. NBA season starts when? December what? 22nd. So what's the date today? 14th. Well, we're a week away. Yep. Well, that's exciting. You see LaMelo? I didn't see LaMelo. Behind the back pass? Well, Couple you should. of those. He had no points. Uh, and I believe four turnovers. He's but... playing for Charlotte. Yeah. That's exciting. So he had four turnovers. Well, it's a pre- I mean, it's a preseason game. It's, I, it's... I have questions about his career. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fun. I mean, this is this. Old, it well, is fun. It is. This is a it's week all, away. It is really. It is uh, 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 the sweet spot in sports is generally October because like, you get the World Series, the NFL, college football. You start going into conference, and the NBA starts up. But now the NBA looks like is it they're going to start doing January uh, December starts? Is this like we think full time? I don't. I mean, I think we're all in a fluid <laughs> situation yeah. as of now. But I mean, it would be better for for us. If I think we started it's better for the sports December, fans. But- Seriously, you can't. You throw it in October. Who's got time to watch NBA? You got NFL, college football. I, yeah, I, I mean, we get way into it the first week, and then yeah. you know we just gotta pay attention to it until later. All right. Well, the Pittsburgh Steelers lost their second straight football game, a real dud last night. I'm not here to say I told you so. I'm not, but I want to play therapist today for all the Pittsburgh Steeler fans out there. Last week, I compared the 11 and one Steelers to a. To a team I love, the Patriots, to last year's eight no Patriots. And I said, we were giving the Patriots last year and the Steelers this year respect and elevating them best based on their history and our respect and their coach and their quarterback who's going to be a Hall of Famer and their brand. And they had earned our respect. But my job as a therapist is to be honest, go deeper, tell you things maybe you don't want to hear. And I said, last year's Patriots and this year's Steelers, you start looking At those wins, and boy, it's a bunch of cruddy teams and very hollow. And when last year did we finally realize New England was a fraud? I remember that session. It was Sunday night football. Baltimore came to town with an energetic, dynamic quarterback and thumped the Patriots 37-20. And New England looked old and slow, and heavy-footed, and offensively outdated. It's like the calendar wasn't their friend. And last night, the Steelers were finally unveiled to all of you as this young upstart team with a dynamic quarterback, Josh Allen. Made the Steelers look old, and slow, and outdated. I'm sorry, Look at these numbers. Listen to them. 14 first downs, 47 rushing yards, one for 10 on third down, 24 minutes time of possession, Big Ben, passer rating of 65. This is not to say as your therapist there aren't qualities I admire about you. T.J. Watt is virtually unblockable. And this is a great front office, and their problems are almost immediately solved in the following draft. But deep down, my client, they know the truth. Steelers, this is not a Super Bowl team. Three straight weeks under 20 points. You don't scare anybody. You don't even really believe in your running game yourself. And oh, by the way, New England last year did win more games after that thumping on Sunday night to Lamar Jackson. And the the Steelers do play the Bengals next week, and they will flex and look strong. But you know the truth. The Steelers cannot beat quality teams. And we also know this. Life evolves. We evolve. Teams evolve. Steelers good early. Steelers unveiled late. Patriots last year good early. Patriots unveiled late. And the Patriot diehards, I mean, this is very common. They made excuses. And the Steeler fans this morning, what about our injuries? Outside of the Rams, the whole damn league's banged up. It's December. It's football. Everybody hurts getting out of bed this morning. And actually, the Steelers' defense is fine. It really is. But this offense, this is not a Super Bowl team. Third down, embarrassing. Run game, non-existent. Drop passes once again. Identity, you have none. Big Ben is 31st in the NFL in yards per attempt. That is the opposite of the Steelers, who have always physically pushed you around and then had the courage at any time, anywhere to go deep and burn you. 
This is a BB gun offense. It's outdated. It's slow. And by the way, New England and Pittsburgh, New England last year, Pittsburgh this year, he'll win games. Nobody's saying Tomlin, Big Ben don't get to the Hall of Fame. Nobody's saying Belichick and Brady don't get to the Hall of Fame. Nobody's saying you'll never win a game. Nobody's saying we're all laughing at you. But this is why you go to a therapist or somebody to tell you the truth. And this morning, Pittsburgh, the team you lost to is a legit Super Bowl threat. They really are Buffalo. They got all the ingredients, all of them. And we all saw them last night. And you're not a Super Bowl team. <sighs> Take a deep breath. It's okay. But at this point, this is just the honest, harsh truth. And painful today, solved potentially later. But Big Ben knows it. Tomlin knows it. You know it. Good team, not special. Wait till next year. Here's Big Ben. I need to look in the mirror, and it starts with me. I need to play better football um, because the ball is in my hands every single play. Um, and so uh, when it's in my hands, I need to, to make the best decision. And right now, I'm not playing good enough football for us to win. If I, if I don't play good enough football, then I need to, to hang it up. But, um, you know, I, I still feel like I can, you know, do, some, do enough things to help this team win football games. And um, I'm going to do everything I can to get us back on track. All right. Enough with being a therapist. Now let's talk about Jalen Hurts and Philadelphia. A lot of Pennsylvania stories today. So Jalen Hurts got the start, ran around, and uh, won the game. So it's time for another edition of Let's Massively Overreact American Sports Media to a quarterback who runs better than he throws. And it's Monday, and he's going to change the NFL. Tim Tebow didn't, Kaepernick didn't, Taysom Hill's not, and Jalen Hurts is not. And Lamar Jackson's not. Unique, as we say, multiple times a year. It always works. Always. The Wildcat worked. It just rarely lasts. And last night, the Saints were on their heels. They didn't know what to expect. They kind of sat back and said, all right, here's a bunch of plays we've never seen. And unique works. And Jalen Hurts, yes, was fun. He gave them an identity. The play calling, it was kind of synthesized down to the very core of what he does. Doug Peterson's like, this kid can move. Let's move him. And it's fun. And actually, Philadelphia's defense seemed to respond. They played great. But can the media stop constantly overreacting to unique in the NFL? Jalen is unique. He was the runner more than a thrower, but certainly like Taysom Hill, capable of throwing. But in the NFL, you watched that game last night. The Saints sat back. Let's be honest. Philadelphia didn't really know how their offense would work last night. They didn't know. So the Saints didn't know. And as I said last week, even if Jalen Hurts wins, it doesn't solve the bigger issue. You backed up a Brinks truck for Carson Wentz, and you owe him $100 million plus. Last night doesn't solve that. Maybe you can move him, maybe you can't. And here's the thing, though. With all young quarterbacks, and especially the, the quarterbacks that appear to be very fond and very special at, at the art of running, it's a series, it's a progression. It's a series of boxes. So last night, Jalen Hurts checked the first. Can you win games? Check. He can win a game. The next box, can you win several games? Looks like he could. Can you win Playoff games. So last night, the first box is checked. He can win a game. Now it's several and playoff games. Since the 1970s, something has always been true in the NFL. You got to sit in the pocket and throw to win. To win big. I mean, big. Conference championships, second round, Super Bowls. And that's just the way it is. Unique can work briefly. But you got to sit and throw the football. Last night, Jalen Hurts averaged about five yards a pass attempt and completed like 57% of his throws. Again, it's the first game. The timing could not have been great. It's the first time he's practiced as a starter all week. But congrats to Jalen Hurts. It made the... It was funny. We were watching Taysom Hill and Jalen Hurts. It, it, you're kind of watching a mirror image of each other. We're not sure if they're going to be franchise game. I thought the game was wildly entertaining. And Jalen added energy. I do believe Philadelphia feels like last night anyway, uh, yesterday, it's a little bit of an identity. It's, it's, it's a little bit of an identity. 
Um, and I'm happy for the kid. But there are still many boxes to check. All right, let's just give the coach a break. Go home, hang out with family, watch the film. Congrats to Jalen, and for that matter, Taysom Hill. But let's not go crazy. Let's add, our job is to add a little bit of context to this. Of course, the Saints were a little lost. They'd never seen it. They didn't know it was coming. They were on their heels. And Philadelphia played with a purpose and identity and real defense. Good for the Eagles. By the way, the Saints host Kansas City next week. And think about this. The Saints, Fox Bet, are a four-point underdog. So I'm supposed to believe, because they lost at Philadelphia to Jalen Hurts, the Saints at home are a four-point dog to Kansas City, a team struggling to put people away. Folks, that's about as good a bet as the NFL has. I'll tell you right now. In fact, you could, I would suggest to you I may have already bet. My, 